Greetings and salutations. This is Frederick John. I promised I would start making one video a week, and here I am, excited as can be, to bring you Elixir lists and tuples. Elixir lists are not arrays. In order to understand lists, you'll have to understand the difference between an array and a list. If you're familiar with object-oriented programming, a language like Ruby, for instance, you've used arrays before. Elixir lists are different. They may resemble an array with the square brackets, but internally they're a different structure, and the way we use lists is going to be different from how you're used to using arrays. So, what are lists after all? Here's a comparison. Let's look at a Ruby array. That's suited for imperative object-oriented programming. It resides contiguously in memory. The traversal is cheap. However, updates are more expensive. Now, Elixir lists are more suited for functional programming. Now, they're not contiguously stored in memory. They're stored as singly linked lists. What this means is that traversal is expensive. However, updates to the list can be cheap. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Remember, Elixir has lists, not arrays. And as you soon find out, lists are actually better than arrays. Here's a diagram that I've drawn of an Elixir list. You can see here that the square brackets indicate that we're dealing with a list. And inside this list, we have five elements, which are separated by commas. If you were looking in the Elixir documentation, you'll find references to the head of a list and the tail of a list. This is different than you might expect the head refers to the first element within a list. The tail then refers to a list of the remaining elements. Each element is linked to the next element. This is where we get the term singly linked list. There are special kernel functions for working with lists. HD will give us the head of a list. TL will give us the tail. There's also a special cons operator that we can use to construct a list. And I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Let's take a look at the terminal. Let's start an IEX session to go over some examples. We'll say list A is a variable and we'll bind to that a list of one, two, three, four, and five. Now, if we want to find the head of list A, remember the head is the first element, it'll give us back one. And if we want to know what the tail, TL, of list A is, it'll give us back a list of the remaining elements. 2, 3, 4, and 5. So as you can see, the head is the first element, the tail is a list of the remaining elements. Knowing that this is how lists are composed, we could do a lot of things that we can't do with an array. And we'll take a look at some of those. Let's take a look at a list of names. Here we have a list with three elements in it. Remember earlier, I said that finding the length in a list can be represented in big O notation as big O N. This means that it's a linear operation. The larger N is, the more elements we have, the longer it's going to take to find the length of the list. The reason is because Elixir has to go through each element until it gets to the end. So it will go Bob, that's the first element, Bob is linked to Alice, the second element, Alice is linked to Sam, the third element, and Sam has nothing after it. That's the last element, so the length of the list is three. It has to go through each one in order to find the length. So we can look at two different operations for adding an item or adding an element to a list. We can add it to the end of the list, 
or we can add it to the beginning of the list. We can either append an element or prepend an element. If we append an element, notice the operation to concatenate a list is plus plus. The result is going to be slow because in order to add an element to the end of the list, we have to traverse the entire list. However, if we prepend an element, here you can see the con operator, the operation is going to be fast because it's going to be in constant time. We don't have to traverse any of the list. We can just add an element to the head of it, to the start. So for instance, here's our little forklift. If we want to add a name to this list, we can be sure it's going to be much faster to prepend the name Fred rather than append the name Fred. Prepending an item onto an Elixir list will always be much faster. It's constant time. We saw the use of the cons operator. Let's take a moment and talk about that. The cons operator comes from the concept of cons cells. It's usually located above the enter or return key on the keyboard, and it gets its name from the ability to construct list. It does so by creating these memory objects called con cells, which hold values and pointers. So take the list A, B, and C. Internally, this is represented in Elixir as the element A and a link to the next element, which is B. The element B then holds a link to the next element, which is C. And the element C then holds a link to an empty list. This is what's known as a proper list. When the second cell in the last element is an empty list, it's known as a proper list. Here's an example. We can destruct the list one, two, three as one using the cons operator and then the list two using the cons operator and then the list three using the cons operator empty list and what this is is essentially a list that's completely destructed out to its longer form now we could also have an item or value in the last cell but this is known as an improper list you might see some of these things come up but you're it's definitely suggested to avoid using improper list this might make more sense if we look at some examples. So we can create a list one, two, and three. And then if we want to prepend to the list, we could do something like zero and list. And this is going to prepend zero onto our list of one, two, and three, list A. We'll bind that to list A so that way we can check. Elixir is a immutable language. You can rebind variables, which confuses some people, but it is immutable. So now we have list A, and that's got 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the way we did that was just by knowing that lists are a head, composed of a head and a tail. Knowing that this is how lists are composed, we can do something like negative 1, and then the cons operator and list A. And let's call this list B. So we can add an item to a list by, add, by prepending it. We could say list D. All you have to realize is that this is just the long form of writing a list. The head is one and the tail is a list where the head is two and the tail is a list where the head is three and the tail is an empty list. That's just a long way of representing a list. And you can see it even gives us back one, two, and three. And if we want to ask if list is the same as list y, it is. In fact, it'll give us back one, two, and three for list y. So then the question becomes, well, what is a tuple? And in Elixir, uh, tuple is an interesting data structure. It's denoted by these curly brackets here, and it is stored contiguously in memory. It could contain different data types, and in fact, it usually does. Tuples usually consist of about two or three elements. If you're putting more than that into a tuple, you might want to question if a tuple is the best data type to reach for. How do you use tuples? 
Tuples are generally used as a return value where the first element is an atom, for example, OK, and then the second element is a result. For example, it could be if you're reading a file and you want to return OK as the first element and then the contents of the file as the second element, or you want to return error as the first element and then the reason for the error as the second element. And the reason you do that is so you can pattern match on the tuple and it becomes very useful when you use pattern matching in conjunction with lists and tuples. Think of a list as a collection that is denoted by these square brackets linked by pointers. It can contain different data types but it usually contains the same data type. You can put into a list words, you could put numbers, you can put atoms, and you can put true and false. Elixir has no problem with that. But usually you want to contain a list of words or numbers or something like that. By the way, the uh, Boolean values true and false are actually just atoms. Anyway, off topic. Lists can contain 0 to n elements. They can be very, very large. Tuples can have as many elements as you want in them. You could put 10 or 20 in, but you usually wouldn't do that. You'd usually keep it something small. And remember, they have the curly braces. Now, Elixir kind of guides you with what you can do with, uh, with the functions that they provide for list and tuples. For example, if we have a tuple that's OK and a file, OK file, and we have this function that's called lm, which we can use to grab an element from the tuple because they are stored by index. Whoops. There we go. So looking up an item in a tuple, because it's stored contiguously in memory, is constant time. Whereas in a list, it's linear time. So it's kind of more similar to the array that we looked at earlier. Or we can get the lm, pass in the tuple that you are looking for and the index of the element that you want and it'll give you back file. So Elixir kind of guides you in in having an, an option to grab the element from a tuple but there is no such function for a list. You, you can't grab the element out of a list. If Let's see we still have list stored here if I wanted to get lm of list and let's get by indexed one we can't do that. It's an argument error. The argument error is because I passed in an argument, the argument list, which is a list, not a tuple. So one of the nice things about Elixir is it kind of guides you in, in which way you're supposed to go. So to recap, a list and tuple both can contain different types of data. Usually we could say that the list contains the same type of data and the tuple will likely have different values, different data types. And usually they'll come in the form of OK and then something. Otherwise, you might pass in something like error. And remember, the reason you're doing this is because you want a pattern match. And what went wrong? You might want to pass back several items, but you'll use a tuple because then you can pattern match on the response. And this response here, you're, if you know you're going to get back OK, some message and state, then you can grab state because you know it's the third element. So hopefully this clears up in your mind exactly what lists and tuples are. These are data structures that we're going to be working with in the future. I'm going to start to post one video a week for I don't know how long, but we'll see how it goes. Let me know if you guys liked this video. Leave a comment if you want to see a video 
on a specific topic. I'm open to creating a video on whatever topics you guys want to learn about. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you want to let me know about a topic you're interested in and you'd like me to talk about in the next video. This does it for lists and tuples in Elixir. Until next time, keep coding.